back to the studio, everyone. I'm Carly Smith here with Rob Washburn for yet another week of three things to watch. And Rob, a ton of excitement in week four. Mammoth, hello, picked up their first FBS win in program history with a thrilling victory over FIU. The Hawks generated 540 yards of offense in that game, oh my goodness, a full 60 minute effort for Kevin Callahan's squad and congratulations to you coach. Okay, Hampton, who we highlighted last week, got the win over Howard to take the battle for the real HU. Delaware, thrilling comeback victory over Penn. Rob, what moments caught your eye this week? Yeah, Carla, let's start with conference play where Stony Brook extended its winning streak to three with a 24-17 road victory at Campbell behind the career-high 179 rushing yards from Roland Dempster, while New Hampshire got four more TD passes from Seth Morgan in a 38-17 triumph over Bryant. Along with Delaware, Rhode Island, Maine, Richmond, and William & Mary all overcame deficits to post non-conference wins. Terrific. Well, we've got a brand new week ahead, quite a few conference matchups. The first thing we're highlighting is Maine at U Albany. Jordan Stevens' crew is coming off of a 26 to 15 win against Merrimack last weekend. Greg Gattuso and company had their bye week, so how do you expect both of these teams to handle this one? Yeah, after giving up 92 combined points and losses over the past two weeks, Maine's defense stepped up in a big way at Merrimack, holding them to 195 total yards and pitching a second half shutout. The Black Bears recorded three sacks and forced three turnovers. Now, along with the improved defensive play, quarterback Carter Peavy threw for a season-high 225 yards and two touchdowns as Maine scored its most points of the season. Now, you already begins defense of its 2023 CA title after a bye week and a brutal two-game road swing at West Virginia and Idaho. Quarterback Miles Burkett performed well against the tough competition, passing for over 290 yards and a touchdown in both games and looks to be getting more comfortable in the Great Danes offense each week. Now, you Albany's defense is still working to come together with nearly an entire new set of starters, and Greg Gattuso feels the group has a lot of potential and has benefited from the open week. Now, two of the last three games between these teams have been decided by a field goal or less, so expect another close one on Saturday. Here we go. Let's hear from both of those leaders at the helm prior to kickoff. Hey, a lot of respect for, for Albany, especially their front and um, you know their O-line and just the physicality and the, the experience there. Defensively, uh, the thing that stood out is just, you know, there's there's some different names there, different faces, but there's still a level of, you know, passion that they play with on the defensive side of the ball. You know, that level of standard of play you still see and feel on tape. When I watch Maine, um, you know, I, I see very, uh, they're kind of been a boogeyman for us over the last group of years. We've started to get our footing a little bit. They're good, good, tough football players. You can tune into this one at 3.30 p.m. on Flow Football. Our next game to preview is Richmond at Elon. This is the conference opener for both teams. The Spiders are coming off of two back-to-back -back wins, and the Phoenix surely won't stop fighting for that first win at home at Rhodes Stadium. Should be such an exciting atmosphere. Rob, your thoughts? Yeah, Richmond has bounced back from that 0-2 start by putting 38 points on the board and back-to-back -back wins over Charleston Southern and Delaware State. Zach Palmer-Smith has led the Spiders rushing attack that has averaged 214 yards in the two victories, and Cam Coleman added 312 yards through the air at Delaware State. Now defensively, Richmond has recorded eight sacks in the past two games, with four of them coming from All-CA defensive lineman Jeremiah Grant. Now, Elon's played a challenging non-conference schedule and is looking to rebound from a pair of home losses. The Phoenix features one of the nation's top freshman running backs in TJ Thomas, who's rushed for 320 yards this season, and big play threat Chandler Brayboy on the outside. The Elon defense has held three of its four opponents to 370 yards or less with All-America safety, Caleb Curtin making a team high 25 tackles. Now the Richmond Elon series has been a competitive one with the team splitting their last six meetings. No reason to think that won't continue on Saturday. Here's what Richmond's Russ Huseman and Elon's Tony Trishiani had to say about the matchup. I, I think maybe philosophies match up and how we play offense and how we play defense and how we how we work the kicking game. Just makes it a competitive game. I think they like playing us. We like playing them. Um, we know it's going to be a competitive game going in each and every year, and and that's the way it is. We're playing for something. I mean, last last year's game was it was a big game, playing for something, and so um, yeah, it's it's a it's they're a great opponent, and um, this will be a big one for us. Tune in to Flow Football at 2 p.m. on Saturday to see the action. 
Okay, here we go. Our third thing to watch features two schools that are separated by less than 30 miles. Always fun to see Hampton battle William & Mary for an in-state rivalry game. Hampton, like I mentioned, coming off of the win against Howard in Washington, D.C. The Tribe took care of business last week against Furman. A ton of talent on both sides of the ball. Rob, what are you looking for? Yeah, Hampton and William & Mary are both off to impressive 3-1 starts and bring a lot of momentum to the conference opener. The Pirates feature the CA's top-ranked defense giving up only 273 yards a game. Linebacker Xavier Marshall's coming off a strong outing at Howard with eight tackles and a big force fumble on a fourth and goal play. Hampton's offense has scored at least 27 points in all four games. The Pirates have had success using two quarterbacks with Chris Ellis and Malcolm Mays, and all CA running back Elijah Burris has tallied 343 yards. Now, William & Mary counters with the conference's top rushing attack, rolling up 244 yards per game on the ground. Bronson Yoder has run for over 300 yards and three TDs in the past two games, and quarterback Darius Wilson added 155 yards rushing and threw for two scores in that win over Furman. Now, the Tribe defense has held all three of its FCS opponents to under 355 yards and was able to force three turnovers a week ago. As you said, these schools are just 30 miles apart and many of the players on both sides have competed each against each other in high school. 757 bragging rights will be on the line. Here we go. Let's hear from Hampton's Trent Boykin and William & Mary's Mike London. There were some things that we really got to clean up because we understand this conference and, and how tough this conference is and some of the mistakes and, and mishaps that you may have had. Uh, in the first four that you could get away with and still win, you, you can't do that uh, when you start playing teams like William and Mary and people in our conference. It'll be, uh, you know, it's a six o'clock game. I believe it'll be a fun game. Uh, I know there'll be a lot of people here, you know, uh, not too far to travel from, from each school from there to here or there down to their place. And, and so uh, we're looking forward to a great crowd and a great opportunity to represent the 757. The Tribe play host to the Pirates at 6 p.m. on Flow Football. Let's check out our full week five schedule. Follow along on social media at CAA Football and online at caafootball.com. See you next week.